But Correct. you can't see me. How come okay, I? Okay, this is our Friday night Zoom meeting for the IABDM. And we are proud to welcome our technical savvy guru, Blanche Gruby, who is going to teach us everything she knows about IV vitamin C. Woohoo! Take it away, Blanche. Okay. How come you can't see my face in the upper right? We don't care about your face. Oh, do you have to put stop? You'll you have, have to, put, to put turn your camera video. on. Okay, you're a tough crowd. <laughs> the little bottom at the bottom of the screen, it needs to say start video, and then you right. people will see your face. All right, so there's a lot of talk about vitamin C these days. Everybody's running to the store, getting wiping out the uh, getting their vitamin C and wiping out the shelves in the health food store. And um, I know even in my office, we've had some difficulty getting the bottles of uh, sodium ascorbate. So it's, it's really funny how everybody used to make fun of us and tell us that, uh, oh, IVC doesn't do much. You really need prescription drugs. You need an antibiotic. You need prednisone. You know, that's what you need to cure 99% of their diseases, right? And now everybody's running to get vitamin C IV. So I thought I'd give you a little talk tonight about the science behind IV vitamin C. Okay, why is it not going to the next slide? I'm pushing this. And it's not going, oh, here we go. That's why. And so this is what vitamin C looks like when you order it from your distributors. Your distributors can be McGuff, that's M, little c, capital G, U, F, F. It can be Apothecure. It can be um, Torrent. There's lots of different companies out there that sell vitamin C. The rationale behind giving IV vitamin C. We're going to go over the preparation of, of making an IV, how to choose a site in the hand, and some of the potential problems. Uh, that you can have with IV vitamin C, although there really aren't too many. You know, it's, it's really a very safe, safe drug. Okay, Tom Levy, this is one of his most famous quotes, and I love it. A lack of understanding can never negate a positive clinical result. So, just because we can't always explain what we do in biological dentistry just because even when we do explain it, our colleagues don't understand us. Just because they don't understand it, it can never negate the fact that with IV vitamin C, my clinical result is that my patients don't need pain meds. My patients don't swell up. My patients don't have problems after their surgery and after their full dental revision because we use IV vitamin C pretty much for everybody. Oh my gosh, I, don't even, I can't even remember if we ever had a full-blooded Cherokee Indian come into the office who could not have IV vitamin C. And I'll explain a little bit later on why you would not want to give IV vitamin C to a full-blooded Cherokee Indian. So I don't think this ever happened in our office. So I, I really honestly say across the board that everybody gets IV vitamin C. So why is IV vitamin C so important? There was a doctor by the name of Frederick Klenner, and he practiced in the 19, primarily in the 1950s. He started in the 40s. In 1949, he demonstrated that vitamin C was the ideal agent for killing any infectious virus even polio and hepatitis C. Any infectious virus. As a matter of fact, I would go so far to stick my neck out and say that the only cure for any kind of a virus is an IV vitamin C. Because if you take an antiviral drug, you're going to have to suffer the side effects of the antiviral drug. If you take IV vitamin C, high doses even, tons of high doses, there are no side effects. So as far as I'm concerned, the only cure for virus is IV vitamin C. It's the ideal agent for helping to destroy bacteria, 
fungi and yeast. It's not just for viruses. And it helps, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> helps to eliminate any toxic chemicals or substances capable of poisoning the body. So how does this miracle material, vitamin C, do that? Well, IV vitamin C, vitamin C in general, is what we call an electron donor. Now I have trouble saying his name. Svent Georgi, Georgi, somehow or other there's another EE -E in there. Georgi, Svent Georgi. He discovered that life is evident only when there is a transfer of electrons. So every chemical reaction in the body, every single one, requires the movement of an electron from an area of high electrical valence to an area of low electrical valence. There isn't a single chemical reaction in the body, and there's probably three billion of them taking place every second in the body. There isn't a single chemical reaction that does not involve the passing of an electron from one side to the other. So if life is only evident when there's a transfer of electrons, then by definition, a healthy electron flow, a he healthy electro he electrons flow freely and fully when you have health. Therefore, illness is when there's electron flow is significantly impaired. And I always like to say, especially if I'm sitting at a poker table, I like to say, you know what? The one who runs out of electrons is the one who loses. The one who runs out of electrons is the one who dies first. And it's true. In the physical body, the money system is the electrons. The one who runs out of electrons is the one who dies. Okay? When you have death, electron flow stops. Vitamin C is an important stimulus to the flow of electrons. <clears throat> it doesn't just kick these chemical reactions in the butt and tells them to hurry up. It actually provides the electrons. So just as dehydration requires water to prevent oncoming death, the disease state requires vitamin C to prevent oncoming death. So basically, if you have any kind of disease, you are really suffering from variable amounts of scurvy. You know, we always knew that scurvy came from lack of vitamin C. And so if you're, if you're really, really sick, you actually, you do have scurvy. Okay, so here's been the problem. Over the years, the RDA for vitamin C is very small. They say 80 milligrams is all you need. Well, that's, that's about what you get from a, an a large orange that was ripened on the tree and juicy and uh, you know wasn't grown with pesticides you might you might get 80 milligrams out of one orange <clears throat> if the orange is frozen before it ever turned ripe and rushed to the uh, the factory in Florida where they're going to squeeze it right away or they're going to freeze it even more and then squeeze it later to make orange juice Nah, that glass of orange juice is not giving you enough vitamin C. So that's what they say. If you, you have 80 milligrams of vitamin C, it's enough to prevent you from getting scurvy. And that's the typical scurvy where the, the legs are bent, uh, the bones are deforming, uh, the gums are bleeding, the, the nose is bleeding, the eyes are bleeding, and, and you're in a lot of pain. The optimal dose, though, is at the other end of the spectrum and then that's the amount which is necessary for proper electron flow within the body. So how much vitamin C should you be taking? Well, Linus Pauling on his deathbed said that the average American, and by the way, this was a long time ago, Linus Pauling died around 1980. And back then he said the average American needs approximately 20 grams that's 20,000 milligrams, 20 grams of vitamin C every day. Well, some people can't tolerate that. Why? Because they get diarrhea. So dousing to bowel tolerance is, is the expression that is used when people ask, how much vitamin C should I take? You should douse to bowel tolerance, which means when you get diarrhea, 
you back off a little bit and that's the amount you should be taking. Or you continue taking it until your intracellular levels are optimal. Well, intracellular levels are hard to measure. Humans and hamsters are the only two mammals that do not have the ability to translate the DNA code to the enzyme L-gluconolactone oxidase. Therefore, they cannot convert glucose into vitamin C. This is actually not true because in the last five to 10 years, they have discovered that there are some humans that can actually produce their own vitamin C. So vitamin C and scurvy. A complete lack of vitamin C in the diet would create a plasma level of zero. If remaining at zero for several months, you will have the development of scurvy. It's an incredibly painful disease. You're pale, your bloated complexion, your listlessness, you, your gums bleed very easily, and then you die. And there's a really beautiful, beautiful photo of a bag of IV vitamin C all ready to go. As a matter of fact, that bag looks like it's almost half empty, so it's already being given to somebody. Lind and Limes, the father of nautical medicine, gave two oranges and one lemon daily to a separate group of sailors for six days. That's all he did. And I believe it was only six sailors. Those sailors got the limes and the oranges for six days and nobody else on the boat got it. And that was enough to prevent scurvy in those six sailors. So the limes and, and oranges, it's, it's just enough to prevent scurvy. I'm sure they still weren't healthy. As an antioxidant, it cannot be substituted by any other antioxidant. I'm gonna say that again, because it's so important for you to know that Vitamin C is the number one antioxidant in the body. Yes, you can take vitamin E. Yes, you can get sunlight. Yes, you can take all kinds of other supplements. No comparison to the amount of electron donation from vitamin C. And it's also the most effective. So what does the medical establishment have against providing a sick patient with a very slow drip, like this one, of vitamin C. When Dr. Klenner had his hospital in the 1950s, as soon as a patient would walk in with any kind of ailment, they would put him in a bed, strap him up, hook him up to an IV vitamin C, and that patient remained on a slow drip of IV vitamin C until their disease was gone. For the average polio patient, it took about five days. The cancer patients took a little bit longer. They were usually there for 14 days. Very interesting. Why are we not doing that today? <clears throat> and important to side, a good friend of mine's son is a doctor, medical doctor, in one of the major cities in the Northeast. And this doctor has finally tested positive for COVID-19. He asked the hospital if they could get him IV vitamin C and guess what they said? No, we don't do that here. Amazing, 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 amazing. Vitamin C is also a chemical antidote. It renders toxins and the poisons from non-toxic or renders the poisons non-toxic or less toxic. So anybody who's a dentist and has comes in contact with mercury, cadmium, nickel, chrome, come in contact with this stuff every single day. We breathe it up our nose. We cut it with our hands. We, we get it into our lungs. We should be taking vitamin C like it's going out of style. It neutralizes endotoxins. Those are the toxins that are released from the microorganisms when they explode, okay? And the exotoxins from microbes. And it increases the effect of cancer chemotherapeutic agents without increasing the side effects. So even if one of my patients or anybody else's patient decides, 
you know what? Yeah, I want IV vitamin C, but I'm still going to go for chemo. I encourage that patient. If they make that decision that they want to go for chemo, go for chemo. But for God's sake, please load your body up with IV vitamin C at the same time. It makes the chemo more effective and it makes it less painful for them. Calabresi. I always thought Calabresi was an Italian dish. He was also a scientist. He made a list of all the chemicals that were denatured by vitamin C. Insecticides, organophosphates, industrial hydrocarbons, benzene, chloroform, polychlorinated biphenols, vinyl chloride. So you know what? In 1980, Linus Pauling said the average American needs 20 grams of vitamin C. But when you take a look at this list of chemicals that we are exposed to on a daily basis, arsenic, cadmium, cobalt, cyanide, so the list on the right side is the uh, dental specialist list, fluoride, lead, mercury, and silica. When you take a look at that list, you realize, you know what? I should be taking a lot more vitamin C to bowel tolerance. Um, and when my hiney hole doesn't want any more, then I stop. And then after you get used to that level, you try again to increase your levels. And that's, of course, only if you want to stay healthy. Okay. We now know that patients from COVID-19 or any of the other coronaviruses don't necessarily die from the virus. What they die of is pneumonia. All right? And so... IV vitamin C should be deployed immediately. Now, what hospital are you going to get that in? I haven't figured that one out yet. Because the people that I know that have gone into hospitals and trying to get it weren't able to. Very interesting. Ruskin and Johnson, 1949. They proved that vitamin C prevented the damaging effect to the heart and kidneys by preventing and lowering the oxygen uptake by metallurides. So it reversed the effect of oxidation. 1964, I'll say Petrovic because I can't say the first one, Mark Anyway, in 1964, they gave 200 milligrams of vitamin C to guinea pigs and then injected them with mercury chloride. Well, you know what? One drop of mercury chloride is enough to kill somebody. Um, as was proven by a scientist at Dartmouth University. She dropped one drop on her gloved hand, and uh, within two months or so, she was dead. Those who continued the treatment for 20 days all survived. Can you imagine for 20 days, every day, they were given 200 milligrams of vitamin, of vitamin C and then injected with mercury, mercury chloride, and they all lived. Those that did not continue the vitamin C, some of those died, probably most of them. And the length of time that you get your vitamin C is just as important as the dose. If you were to give somebody 200 milligrams of vitamin C in what we call a bolus injection, in other words, it's pushed into the vein very quickly. Well, most of that vitamin C is going to be out in the urine probably within an hour or two. So when you give IV vitamin C, it's, it has to be given a slow drip for a long period of time. And if you're going to be taking oral vitamin C, you don't take all six grams in the morning with your coffee. That's just a plain dumb thing to do. You should spread that vitamin C, those six doses out throughout the day. One in the morning, one at around 10, one at around one, three, six, and nine before you go to bed. Doctors Rath, Wright and Cathcart. This, this is not Jim Wright from Las Vegas. It's a different Dr. Wright. Um, Dr. Cathcart did a tremendous amount of work on vitamin C. And they have found to be effective in periodontal disease. I'm going to skip arthritis. I'm going to emphasize connective tissue disease, which is what periodontal disease is. And let's see on this list, what else? Oh, let me see. Bone fractures. I'm pointing out all of the things that we as dentists see all of the time. And why am I doing that? Because when they pointed out that 
IV vitamin C helped with periodontal disease, connective tissue disease, bone fractures. Well, that gives us as dentists the justification for giving our patients IV vitamin C. So any patient that comes into my office, when I do my initial examination, it always includes a periodontal screening and a cancer screening and an orthodontic screening. Well, in the periodontal screening, we always, always, always find at least one area of inflammation. Bingo, that becomes a justification for giving IV vitamin C. And nobody has challenged me that on that and said, gee, doctor, you give an awful lot of vitamin C for just a little bit of inflammation in the mouth. <clears throat> now, this says that the Anderson Medical Group, which, which supposedly are add alternative modalities to their treatment, um, I'm not really sure just how many alternative modalities they add, but at least they are adding IV vitamin C for the use of COVID-19. Bravo. Influenza and Cathcart. I read a paper by Cathcart um, that he, he, he went over some very interesting figures. He said if a person has influenza, if they have the flu, all total, they're going to need 150 grams of vitamin C. <clears throat> well, if you're giving, say you're giving 50 grams a day, you should be able to get rid of influenza in three days, right? <clears throat> He says that it always, always, always kills or neutralizes a virus. He had, he had never seen a case where a patient got enough, high enough dose of vitamin C and their, um, their viruses didn't go away. Not a single one. Matter of fact, I had a patient who came, oh, I guess it was about 10 years ago, 10, 15 years ago. A patient came into my office with a very serious case of Bell's palsy. And he was told that there was no cure. And his whole right side of his face was dripping and drooling and his, his eyes were drooping. And we put him on 100 grams of IV vitamin C, slow drip. And in three days, his Bell's palsy was gone. Gone, gone, gone. Between 1914 and 1980, 1 million people, 10 million, 10 million people died in World War I. Did we close the country? No, quite the contrary. Anybody who was in the country was working very hard. That's when Rosie the Riveter uh, was discovered, right? Women, women went to work in the factories to provide for the men who were out in the, in the war. But 10 million people died. In the, uh, the flow epidemic of, of 1918, 20 million people died. They didn't have anywhere near the sanitation that we have. They did not have the uh, antibiotics that we have, which, would, which doesn't kill the virus, I know that, but it would reduce the comitant bacterial infections that the people would get also. They didn't have heating in those days. Um, I know a lot about that because my husband's mother's side of the family, half the family was wiped out by the 1918 influenza epidemic that went through Scranton and Dunmore. But their life was very, very hard back then, very hard. So 20 million people died from the flu. Oh, I don't think they closed the country either back then. 1920, we had the swine flu. 60 million people died from the swine flu. I, I know, I know the politicians are trying to increase the numbers here, but we didn't, we didn't come anywhere near that, all right? And when you, you talk about vaccines, Every year they come out, they try to come out with a vaccine, but the vaccine is for last year's flu, swine, uh, flu, flu bug. And, and we've got about two, anywhere from two to 300 different flu agents. So which one are you going to find a vaccine for? All 300? Um, if, if, if Mr. Gates had his way, he would come up with 300 vaccines that were probably ineffectual, but he would want to give them to everybody just so, you know, to make some more money. I guess I'm not supposed to get too political in this lecture, but I can't help myself. We're, we are going through strange times. So of the two to 300 different flu agents, we have vaccines for guess how many? Two, that's it. <clears throat> so we now know that high dose vitamin C, 150 grams for somebody who's sick, 
<clears throat> but a lot less for somebody who is healthy. The normal patient should take anywhere between five to 15 grams a day. I recommend my patients start with six, two breakfast, two at lunch, two at dinner. <clears throat> Periodontal disease. Cherraskin, the Royal College of Surgeons in Dublin, Ireland, to a group of patients who were treated with vitamin C had a noticeable improvement in their periodontal membrane as seen on x-rays. Patients were given only one gram per day. So one gram a day makes a difference. And so are we justified as dentists to recommend vitamin C for our patients? Absolutely. Okay, you can look up the vitamin C connection by Cheraskin, Harper and Rowe, 1983. Yours. Beer and wine will decrease the amount of vitamin C in the tissue. Not, red wine doesn't do that, but beer and white wine will do that. So if you have a hangover, take 40 grams of vitamin C. It will neutralize the effects of the uh, uh, hangover by detoxifying the acetaldehydes. Good to know. For no reason, for no, if for no other reason, you should give vitamin C to restore the depleted levels within the tissue caused by the existing mercury. And here are my references. We've got uh, Sam Queen, Queen and Company. Uh, Thomas Levy wrote an excellent book about vitamin C, infectious diseases, and curing the incurable and IV therapy made incredibly easy by Springhouse. Um, I believe, I'm not sure, I'm not 100% sure about Sam Queen's book, but I know that Tom Levy's book can be found on the Huggins Applied Healing website. And we have other books also by Tom Levy, um, you can do that. So let's talk about preparation now. For those of you who have never done an IV, what do you need? You need an IV pole, not for dancing, but to put the bag on. Okay, and hopefully it has at least two bag holders. Otherwise, you can only give one IV at a time. In a pinch, I have been known to take a bunch of coat hangers, stick the IV bag on a coat hanger and hang it over a photo or a, a lampshade, whatever. You're going to need a tourniquet to put some pressure on the blood vessels of the arm. You're gonna need some sterilizing wipes. Now, medical doctors like to use alcohol but if you use alcohol and wipe the arm with the alcohol or the hand with the alcohol, you're gonna to have to blow on it with either an air compressor or wave your hand back and forth. Don't blow on it with your mouth, but you, cause you gotta make sure that you blow off all of the alcohol. If you, if you penetrate the skin and enter into a vein and you've taken some alcohol along with you, that alcohol will cause sclerosis of the inside of the vein. So you, you don't want that. In our office, we use ozone. Or, or betadine, but most of the time we use ozone. Or the first thing my dental assistant does when she comes in in the morning is to ozonate a bottle of sterile water. And we use that throughout the day to wipe people's hands and um, keep things clean. And of course, you're gonna need some gloves. And now you're gonna need to prepare the IV bag. This is the company, one of the many companies that supplies um, vitamin C, Torrance. I think they're a little bit cheaper than McGuff. McGuff is, is probably the largest company in the United States. Apothecure is the company where you can get procaine and other IV solutions, things that you need. You're gonna need a, a bag of Ringer's lactate. You can go with sterile water, but if you do that, you have to worry about the osmolarity of the, of the water. And I'm basically lazy. I'd rather not worry about it. So I use Ringer's lactate. There's enough salt in it. I don't have to worry about red blood cells exploding. An isotonic solution has an equal osmolarity with that of the serum. So fluid stays in the intravascular space longer, and it's an excellent choice for hydration. Lactated ringers or normal saline is good. Patients with liver disease will, con will convert the lactate into bicarbonate, increasing the pH above 7.5. Now, you have a hypotonic solution. Suppose you use just plain distilled water. That has an osmolarity that's lower than the serum. Therefore, the fluid will rapidly leave the vessels 
and enter into the interstitial tissue. So if a patient already has edema to some extent, using a hypotonic solution would increase the edema. So this is the most dangerous of the three to, to give. It can cause a huge fluid shift from the interstitial tissue into the cells and then create cardiovascular collapse because of the degree of intravascular vessels or water, okay? A hypertonic solution does just the opposite. It has an osmolarity that is higher than that of the serum. So fluid will flow rapidly from the cells and interstitial tissue into the blood vessels. This is very good for patients with edema and it's very good for patients with high blood pressure. <clears throat> Not good though for patients with diabetic ketoacidosis or in impaired kidney or heart problems. They cannot handle the extra fluid. Okay, so what's the formula? We usually start with 25 grams of vitamin C, okay? Usually. If the patient tells you that they've had many, many, many IV vitamin Cs and you believe them, then you can go ahead and start with 50 grams. If a patient has cancer, we like to get them up to 50, 75, and then 100 as soon as we possibly can. I like to add a one to one and a half cc's of sodium bicarbonate just to make me feel better and know that it's not a hypotonic solution. For patients with cancer, you should add one and a half to three cc's of magnesium sulfate because the magnesium helps with the cancer cells. And you can get that, as you can see on the slide from American Reagent in Shirley, New York. And then if you like the patient, you want to add one to two cc's of procaine. The reason we do this is because the vitamin C is irritating to the inside of the lining of the vessels. And, and it hurts a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me. If the patient complains that the, the IV is hurting, we usually take a heating pad, put it on the arm above the hand, do not let the heating pad from the heat touch the needle. You don't want a hot needle inside somebody's blood vessel. You put the heating pad above where the needle is. And what that does is it dilates the blood vessels and allows the vitamin C to flow more rapidly without irritating the inside of the veins. If that doesn't work, you can go ahead and give another cc of procaine. Just make sure that you're doing a very slow drip. Okay, so all of the above um, medicaments are added to the 500 cc bag of lactated ringers. And if you're going to put in, if you add that all up, you figure we got uh, 50 milliliters of vitamin C, we've got two cc's of, of procaine, oh, we've got another three c's of magnesium sulfate, we've got a sodium bicarbonate, and we're looking at anywhere between 50 to 56 extra cc's we're gonna put in the bag. Well, two things cannot occupy the same thing in the same space at the same time. It's one of uh, our Newtonian physics laws, which actually doesn't really mean anything if you talk about quantum physics today, but I just thought I'd throw that in. So since two, two things can't occupy the same space at the same time, that means you must first empty the bag take out about 55, 60 cc's at the, right at the beginning. And we don't have the slide presentation, so. Okay, some of the benefits of IV vitamin C therapy, it maintains the fluids of the patient. And that's important if you're gonna be working on a patient all day as we do in our office, we do the full dental revision in one day. And so the patient is, does not have the opportunity to get up and get something to drink. So. The IV maintains their body fluids, maintains nutritional support by giving them vitamin C. Sometimes we'll even add B-complex vitamins and we'll add uh, minerals and trace minerals. So they're getting something during the day. And of course, it maintains their electron transport system. It also maintains their blood glucose level. The last thing you want to do is have a patient in your chair that's got diabetes and you watch their blood sugar drop because you've had them in a chair too long. Uh, giving them IV vitamin C will maintain the blood glucose level, almost to the point that it'll actually look like the patient is hypergluconic uh, because if, if a patient takes their blood, their, their blood sample right after having an IV vitamin C, 
they actually might have blood sugar levels of 300 to 400. It does not mean that their blood sugar level is that high. It just means that the vitamin C has the same chemical configuration as glucose and it's recognized by their machines as sugar. Okay, the other advantage to doing IV vitamin C is that you already have a port of entry should there be an emergency. Um, this is wonderful. You don't, you don't have to wait for 911 to come and try to hook the patient up, all right? And um, also because I, I have an IV in the patient's hand, I do conscious sedation so I can give more accurate dosing when I'm sedating the patient. I'm not giving them a pill waiting an hour to see if they pass out in my chair. I'm controlling it. Okay, what are the risks of IV vitamin C? Well, if a patient doesn't have the enzyme G6PD, then you will have a problem. That stands for glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase. It's the enzyme that allows the body to metabolize vitamin C. Some people don't have that. So remember at the beginning of the lecture I said I would not want to give an IV to somebody who's a full-blooded Cherokee Indian. Why? Because full-blooded Cherokee Indians do not have G6PD. As a matter of fact, anybody with some Indian blood in them may not have G6PD. East Indians, Blacks, Hispanics, all people of color run a much higher rate of deficiency of G6PD. So in my office, everybody, and I mean everybody, gets a G6PD test. I broke that rule once when we were giving a course on how to do an IV, and we had a lot of people in the office. There was a lot of confusion in the office. There was one young lady who showed up for the course as a patient, and she did not have the G6PD test. So I scooted her off into my husband's side of the office to get some muscle testing. And he muscle tested her and he said, yeah, she was good. She came out and she came up to us and she said, yeah, I'm good. I, I'm good with IV vitamin C. Well, that's just wonderful. And she sat her down in the chair and one of the doctors practice on her. And she wasn't in that chair, but whew, maybe five, 10 minutes. And she said she wasn't feeling good. So we immediately took out the IV vitamin C. And then I went over to my husband and I said, you know that young lady that you, you muscle tested? I thought you said she was good with vitamin C. He said, oh, yeah, 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 she's good, but she can only handle five grams. And that's exactly how much the lady got before she started feeling sick. So interesting. That was just a little lack of communication that day in the office. So ever since then, I, I make sure that everybody has a G6PD. All right. If they don't have G6PD, you can wind up having the rub, blood blood cells rupture and you've got what's called a hemolytic crisis. Okay, this enzyme, by the way, is for those of you geeks who wanna know this, it's on the surface of the red blood cells. And, and the purpose of it is to prevent the cell from oxidative damage. Too much of an antioxidant will create a crisis also. Okay. Multiple oxidant compounds can provoke a crisis. So if the patient is taking other things like primaquin, acetylphenyl hydrazine, sulfonamides, large doses of IV vitamin C, you can have a problem. I've never had somebody like that who's taken so much antioxidants that the vitamin C was a problem for them, but I suppose it's possible. So the populations at risk, like I said before, for G6 defeat, uh, deficiency, American Blacks, Black Africans, Mediterraneans, Indians, and Southeast Asians. Cancer and IV vitamin C. While it has been shown that high doses of IV vitamin C on patients with advanced cancers, it has been shown to be only beneficial. There have been a few reports that patients with large tumors can actually have too many of the cells dying all at once and release their toxins into the body too rapidly for the body to handle. Well, I suppose that you could say that that's a, a problem. I don't know. I, if I had cancer, I would want it to disappear quickly. And then I would want to take more vitamin C to handle the toxins. <clears throat> 
It's generally recommended to start patients with large tumors on three to five grams per day and to gradually increase the higher doses. Hydration is of paramount importance to get rid of the toxins. Laetrile. Laetrile contains cyanide, which is normally detoxified by cysteine in the body, a sulfur-containing amino acid. Vitamin C, in doses of three grams per day, has been observed to reduce both cysteine and thiocyanate levels in the urine, which means you're using it more. Again, so what are the bad things about doing an IV? You, I suppose if you didn't clean the body, you could have infection. Okay, if you go through the vein and you come out the other side, you're gonna have infiltration of the vitamin C into the tissue. And the patient is gonna look at their arm, look at you and say, is my arm supposed to be swollen like a football? That's a problem. And the only problem is that it's gonna hurt for days. It's gonna get absorbed by the body and it'll be fine, but it's gonna hurt for days and the patient's gonna be mad at you. Okay, is it possible to have bleeding? Absolutely. You're, as a matter of fact, when you take the needle out, I expect you to have bleeding. One of the biggest mistakes that IV therapists use is they tend to push the gauze on top of the needle. They start to press and then they pull the needle out. Don't do that. You're better off having some bleeding. Pull the needle straight out. This way it's not irritating the walls of the inside of the veins. Pull it straight out. So what if there's a few drops of blood on the floor? So what? You should expect a little bleeding. It's a good thing. And then put the gauze on top and stop the bleeding. There is a potential for allergic reaction, especially in the patients who are highly allergic to corn. Very, you know, years ago, let's say 20 years ago, I hardly ever got anybody who came in and was allergic to corn. And we had to order them beet, B-E-E-T, vitamin C. Now we get them on a regular basis. So we have to keep in stock a supply of beet vitamin C, which is twice as expensive as corn vitamin C. So that is a problem. If the patients are highly sensitive to corn, you're gonna to have to you know, switch over to beet vitamin C. And of course, like I said before, G6PD insufficiency. Okay, movement of the patient has to be controlled. So after we've established an IV line and we've taped the needles and the tubing to the hand, we then tape the hand to a board so that the patient doesn't uh, you know, move the hand too much. They don't, get, they don't slap it on the side of the chair. They don't go to grab toilet paper when they go to the bathroom with that hand. By putting a board on it, they know that it's supposed to stay relatively still. Kidney stones, we have to talk about because there are a lot of people say high doses of kidney stones will cause oxalic acid to form in the kidneys and make stones. Well, vitamin C is metabolized to oxidize ascorbic acid and then to dehydroascorbic acid. When it does that, it donates two electrons. The DHAA then becomes diketogluconic acid. DKGA then becomes lysonic acid, xylose, threonic acid, and oxalic acid or oxalate. Oxalate is the, the material that everybody's worried about. Oxalate is the major end breakdown product of fully oxidized and utilized vitamin C. So since kidney stones are made up primarily of calcium oxidate, oxalate, Many conventional doctors have come to the conclusion that mega doses of vitamin C will cause kidney stones, and it is not true. Kerhan, Harvard University study, looked at 85,000 women. That's a lot of women. Over a 14-year period and found no correlation between IV vitamin C dose and stone formation. In 1996, looked at it again with 45,000 men and again found no correlation. Gerster, 1997, found that there was a statistical correlation between high dose of daily vitamin C and a decrease in kidney stones. So when they tell you, don't give me a lot of vitamin C because it's gonna cause stones, it just ain't true. So are there any questions? Hello? 
No, it's just we, most people are like um, uh, I'm muted. Oh. Um, no, I love you unmute yourself to ask me a question. Oh well, yes, I did. I'm not. I'm not. I don't have any questions though. I healed from stage four cancer with IV vitamin C. You're preaching to the One. choir with me. Preaching to the choir here. That's right. <laughs> and so I that friend of mine whose son uh, tested positive to COVID nineteen, I I told him to tell him to get on IV vitamin C immediately. Mm -hmm. And he said, "For how long?" I said, "Until he's all healed." Yeah. It's and it's not. It's not super expensive. It's not anything painful. I mean, the worst of it is, is if you end up with like a, you know, an, an infiltration, but yeah. And anybody who says that they've got, that they're testing positive, I'm like, just tell them to do IV vitamin C. You know, but a lot of the doctors are not willing to do it. They're also not willing to do IV ozone, which I think is ridiculous. So you know. well, they're not pushed to do it because it's not expensive. They only push to do the push the drugs that that you know the pharmaceutical companies can make a lot of money on. Yeah, it's, and it's that's what they push. Yeah, yeah. This this entire COVID crisis, like the hospitals are, you know, people are like, oh, they're overrun, etc. I'm like, they are making money hand over fist. Their their hospital beds are all full. Everything is full, you know, and the rest of us the are emergency areas are are empty the emergency rooms are empty they're, mm -hmm. they're putting people in the hospital and calling it COVID-19 and it's not COVID-19 the emergency rooms are empty they well, also, oh go ahead um the other thing that I've uh that I've you know found out is that is that um you know that a lot of the people who are getting sick right they mm -hmm. are um they've lost their insurance because they were laid off well, how are you supposed oh. to pay for anything if you're laid off? You That's know? right. It, it's wow. <laughs> ridiculous. Blitz, can I ask if you've had any difficulty getting the IV bags or the lines? No, not. I did in the past, years yeah. ago. Yeah, me too. Ago, we had trouble getting bags, but not now. We seem to have plenty. And the same thing with the lines. Do you like a maxi or a mini drip? I like a mini drip. Are you talking about the line or the bag? The bag is maxi. I use a 500 cc no. bag. No, no, the the line I'm talking about. And so, uh, would you the is the the slide that has the uh, resources to purchase that right. that has um, McGuff on there? Yeah, McGuff is not on there. Uh, I have Torrance. And Apothecure. Okay. And that's where you get your IV uh, lines as well, or just the vitamin C? No, we, we, we get our lines from Merit Pharmaceutical okay. in California also. Can you, you know, uh, put that in the chat? Yeah, Can you shoot that in the chat area? Chat, let me see. How do I do that? Um, Go down to the bottom, and it says chat. And that will log on there permanently. One doesn't chat. Stop share. Let's see. Yeah, go ahead and stop share. Stop share. Okay, there, there we go. Now you go uh, down chat. to the bottom and there's a okay. chat bubble. Okay, so to everyone, yes. um, your staff. Boom. Your. Uh, Staff must shop constantly because the prices go up in one department and they go down in another. You have to shop constantly. So we get get lines and needles from Merit. Merit. Pharmaceuticals in Los Angeles. Boom. We get vitamin C from McGuff in K. 
California also. Sometimes torrents will have a sale on vitamin C. And so you guys, we, when you buy your uh, bags of, now what you're using saline. I use ringers lactate, yeah. Ringers saline. lactate, okay. So when you buy them, please know that there is an expiration date on them. So don't think that you're doing yourself a favor to buy 500 of them. Right. Okay, so I think I have all the three companies up there, Torrance, McGuff, and uh, Merritt Pharmaceuticals. Okay. Perfect. Very good. Anybody else have any questions for Blanche? Nope. Blanche, is it was amazing. Oh, as wait, 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 wait. Actually, somebody We have asked. a chat question. Yeah. yeah. Okay, where is it? It said, for regular non-cancer, what is the recommended dose of daily oral vitamin C? Recommended dose is anywhere from 5 to 15, 20. I mean, Linus Pauling said 20. I recommend orally? Orally. 5, 20 grams of vitamin C orally. Okay. I recommend so basically go to tolerance. You yeah, go to tolerance. tolerance. And you yes. know, you'll see that. Interestingly, you'll see that that changes as you get sick. So I'll use myself as an example. On a day that I'm super stupid healthy, I might take in three grams spaced out over the day in, in water and I'm fine. Right. And any more of that would cause loose stools. And yet on a day that I'm sick, it could be 30 grams. Correct. The body will suck it up. Absolutely suck it up. And you know, I, I, might, I might also add here that the pills that we take that are vitamin C, if you take a thousand milligrams of one of those pills, what you actually get in the plasma is maybe 150 to 200 milligrams. You only get a, a 10, 10 to 20% of it with the, and that's why you get bowel, that's why you get diarrhea. We don't absorb it well. If you are taking lipospheric vitamin C, 1000 milligrams translates to four to 500 milligrams in the plasma. It's absorbed much, much better. And of course, if you take IV vitamin C, 1000 milligrams is 1000 milligrams. So I see there's a question here about what about kids? Is it by weight? Yes, it's by size and weight. So, the, you know, a skinny little kid who's only 60 pounds, you're lucky if you can get them to suck on half of one of those uh, snot packs by Live On Laboratories, the lipospheric vitamin C. You're lucky if you can get the kid to take half, but which is 500 milligrams. But again, as the child starts to take it on a daily basis, they will be able to absorb more and more. Okay, and, and if you get into the habit of giving your kids vitamin C every day, well, you know what? They're never going to get sick. There's just no need for it. I mean, I, I, I can't help but being amused. When my boys went to school, when they finally decided they, they did not want to go to uh, the Christian school anymore and they wanted to go to public school, and the nurse said, well, I need to see their immunization records. And I said, my boys are never immunized. And she said, well, I have to tell you that if there's any kind of a breakout in this school, your son will get sent home first. <laughs> I was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> my sons will love that. Are you kidding me? They'd love to get sent home first. And it's the same thing with vitamin C. If your kids are healthy all the time, they go to school they're not, gonna, they're not gonna be the ones to get sick. It's the other kids that are gonna get sick. So there is something to be said for homeschooling. I wonder how many people are going to continue homeschooling now that they've tried it for a while. Um, I have, uh, the, the follow-up question was, what about kids? Is it by weight? Thank you. Yes, yes, I just said that. Oh, okay. Okay. I loved it. We'll have it up online as soon as we can.
Okay. And so um, be looking for it. Be, make sure and tell all your friends that they missed a good one, but it's recorded and they can certainly take advantage of Blanche's generosity and her knowledge. And Thank you so much, Blanche. You're yep. welcome. Thank you. Be Thank looking you. forward to hearing from Blanche next Friday night as she explains uh, DNA and tooth testing. Wait a minute. I thought, I thought President Trump told us all to go back to work next week. No, he didn't. Oh, <laughs> I thought he said, we're all going back to work and all the different you are, things. You were busy eating and drinking with Anita. You, don't have, you have no idea what. <laughs> yeah, we were partying.